specialist subject for one minute. So if you are ready, Vivian, your minute starts. Now, with which band did Midge Ewer have a number one hit before joining Ultravox? Uh, pass. Slick. What was the Sex Pistols' first top ten single? Pass. God Save the Queen. Which group were Eric Clapton, Jeff Beck and Jimmy Page once members of? Cream. Yardbirds. Who recorded the albums Mind Games and Walls and Bridges? No, pass. John Lennon. What was Paul Simon's first solo hit? Pass. Mother and Child Reunion. Who was Alison Moyer's partner in the duo Yazoo? Vince Clark. Correct. Which group had hits with At The Hop in 1958 and again in 1976? Danny and the Juniors. Correct. What nationality is Gordon Lightfoot? Canadian. Correct. Which drummer wrote the music for the film Rumblefish? Pass. Stuart Copeland. Who founded the Tamla Motown record label? Pass. Barry Gordy. With which group did Janis Joplin sing on the album Cheap Thrills? Pass. Big Brother and the Holding Company. Who was the most... It's still yours. Who was the most famous member of the Manish Boys? Pass. It was David Bowie. Vivian, at the end of that round, you've scored six points in the spotlight, so the team total now is 11. <laughs> now, grapplers, which member of the Hoofers would you like to put into the spotlight? Would you choose Alan, please? Alan, would you like to choose from Living World, Sport, History, the 1960s, or Potpourri? Um, history, please. History. That is your subject. In the spotlight for one minute, and if you're ready, your time starts. Now, during the American War of Independence, which British general surrendered at Yorktown? Uh, uh, pass. Cornwallis. Who founded a monastery on Iona in the year 563? St. Columba. Correct. What was the name of the battle in 1798 when Nelson defeated the French at Abukia Bay? Battle of the Nile. Correct. A political society founded in 1884 included Bernard Shaw and H.G. Wells amongst early members. What was it called? The Fabian Society. Correct. Which legal decision in 1901 established the principle that trade unions could be sued for damages over a strike? Taft Act? No, I don't know. It was called the Taff Vale Case. Mm. Which Roman emperor ordered his army to gather seashells? Uh, Caligula. Correct. In 1745, the Jacobite forces, led by the young pretender, defended, defeated General Cope in Scotland. What was the name of this battle? Preston Pans. Correct. The revolt by native soldiers in the Bengal army in 1857 is usually known as the Indian Mutiny. By what alternative name is the rebellion known? Lucknow Incident. No, it was called the Sepoy Rebellion. The end of that round, Alan, you have scored ten points in the spotlight and your team total is now 18. <laughs> well, up until now, there's been uh, no conferring in any, in any of our rounds, but this is the point where we do allow the team members to confer with each other because we're going to play in a spin, which means we will get our computer to spin letters of the alphabet and ask our teams and you at home to see if you can find the longest word possible from the three letters. The difference is that it's one of the teams in the studio that will pick up five bonus points. So if you're ready, teams, let's spin the letters. A is the first letter of the sequence and must be the first letter of your word with L and B to follow in that order within the body of the word. And your 30 seconds starts now. up teams will you put your pencils down please and first of all hoofers how many letters do you have in your word uh, seven thank you griffin grapplers how many letters in your word uh, nine hoofers your word and will you spell it please uh, albumen that's a l b u m e n thank you and grapplers your word and spell it please alabaster a l a b a s t e r thank you 
story. With the letters ALB coming up on our screen from our computer, we got uh, a seven-letter word from the Hoofers, and that was albumen. Nine letters in the word from the Griffin Grapplers, alabaster. Now, uh, one of the things that uh, we say in this game is that the words not only have to be spelt correctly, but the letters that we give our teams have to come in the correct order. That is, the word must begin with the first letter of the sequence, in this case the letter A, and L and B have to come in that order within the body of the word. And uh, a few times we've had words where the letters have been transposed a little. So just to make sure that everybody knows where those letters are, as you can see, we now not only write the words out for you at the bottom, but we've picked out the A, the L, and the B in yellow so that we can all be absolutely certain that that is the correct order. And as you can see, both teams have got it absolutely right. But as always, it's five points that go to the longer of the two words, that word being acceptable to our lexicographer. In this case, it's the nine letters that make up alabaster that came from the Griffin Grapplers. So they pick up the five bonus points and their scoreline now reads 16. edging closer together. 18 for the Farnham Hoofers, 16 for the Griffin Grapplers. What happens now when we put a member of each side back into the spotlight? This time it's the Griffins who get first choice and uh, on the Hoofers team they have David or Caroline to choose from. We choose David please. And David you can choose from Living World, Sport, the 1960s or Potpourri. I'll choose uh, Sport please. Sport to be your spotlight subject. If you are ready, your questions and your time start. Now, which British driver was runner-up in the 1986 Formula One Championship? Nigel Mansell. Correct. The Queen Anne Stakes is the first race of which famous horse rating, racing meeting? Uh, pass. It's Royal Ascot. Where did Roger Bannister break the four-minute mile? Wembley. No, at the Iffley Road Track in Oxford. At the end of the last soccer season, which non-league club won promotion to the fourth division? Scarborough. Correct. Which Kent cricketer moved to Worcestershire for the 1987 season? Pass. Graham Dilly. At which sport, besides tennis, was Fred Perry a champion? Squash. Table tennis. What was the maximum number of horses allowed to run in the 1987 Grand National? 35. 40. Which golfer, son of a famous entertainer, won the US Amateur Golf Championship in 1981? Pass. Nat Crosby, son of Bing, in the boat race, which is the first bridge that the crews pass under? Barnes. Hammersmith, at which sport did Durham Wasps become British champions at Wembley in April? Rugby Union. Ice hockey. Who was Britain's first pole vaulter to clear... <coughs> it's still yours. Who was Britain's first pole vaulter to clear 18 feet? Tony Thompson. No, he was Brian Hooper. David, at the end of that round, you've scored four points in the spotlight, so your team total now is 22. Now, Hoofers, on the Griffin Grapplers team, you can put either Joe or Tony into the spotlight. Uh, well, we'll have uh, Tony, please. And Tony, you can choose from Living World, the 1960s, or Poopery. I'll have Living World, please. The Living World. You have one minute in the spotlight. If you're ready, your time starts. Now, which bird is principally associated with Loch Garten? Pass. The osprey. Larva reared entirely on royal jelly develop into which insect? Uh, a queen bee. Correct. To which order of birds does the guillemot belong? It's the orc family. Correct. A female fox is a vixen. What is a male fox? A dog. Correct. Which common creature has the scientific name of Musca domestica? A mouse. No, it's a housefly. What is the world's tallest known living species of tree? Uh, great sequoia. Correct. What is a blenny? A fish. Correct. Which organ of the body secretes bile? Liver. Correct. What name is given to young oxen? Um, calf. Steers. In a flower, what together do the ovary, style and stigma make up? The stamen. No, the carpal or pistil. Ross, weddell, crab eater and leopard are all kinds of which mammal? Seal. Correct. What is the larva of the daddy long legs commonly known as? Leather jacket. Correct. Which is the largest of the cephalopods? Uh, a squid, giant squid. Correct. At the end of that round, Tony, you have scored 18 points in the spotlight and your team total now reads 34. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
So we've had in a spin, we've had 40 members in the spotlight, which means that we are down to our last round in this game of Master Team, Team Challenge. So once again, teams, will you please put your fingers on the buzzers? And if you're ready, let's play. What is the title of Solzhenitsyn book in three volumes about Soviet labor camps? Tony. Gulag Archipelago. Correct. From what do we obtain turpentine? Tony. A tree, resin from a Correct. tree. Correct. What is the name of the obsolete measurement of about 18 inches reckoned from the... Alan? Cubit. Correct. The prefix thio in a chemical compound indicates... Tony. Four times. No. Incorrect challenge. Bonus point to the opposition and full question. The prefix thio in a chemical compound indicates the presence of which element? Too late. It's sulphur. Which sisters played the characters Gert and Daisy? Tony. Elsie and Doris Waters. Correct. Who succeeded General Galtieri as president of Argentina? Caroline. Alphonsine. No. Bonus point to the opposition for an incorrect challenge. Full question. Who succeeded General Galtieri as president of Argentina in the wake of the Falklands conflict? Joe? Post Quailer. No, it's General Bignone. Which manufacturing process leaves a waste product called Sandiver? Too late, it's glass production. If the male side of a family is called the spear, David. The star. Correct. Who said, I hate television, I hate it as much as peanuts, but I can't stop eating peanuts? Joe? Winston Churchill. No. Alan? Jimmy Carter. No, it was Orson Welles. Which European country became a republic in 1910 after the overthrow of King Manuel II? Tony. Spain. No. David. Portugal. Correct. What is the everyday name for the projection of the thyroid cartilage? Tony. Adam's apple. Correct. <laughs> Two points on the buzzer there for the Griffin Grapplers, which means that the final scoreline looks like this. The Farnham Hoofers from Surrey have 28, the Griffin Grapplers have 43. that the Griffin Grapplers will be with us again tomorrow to meet another team. The Farnham Hoofers will not be with us, but before they leave, I just have to tell you that that very quick question that David interrupted with uh, the answer, the distaff, distaff side, in case you're wondering what he was talking about, the full question is that if the male side of a family is called the spear side, what is the female side known as? The distaff. David said it, and that was correct. That's it, the end of today's programme. We will be back tomorrow with another team to meet the Griffin Grapplers, and I hope you'll be with us too. So until then, from all of us, Goodbye.